Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a quick look at Windows 10 running on the Raspberry Pi 400. Now this isn't Windows IoT or anything like that. This is Windows 10 running on the Broadcom ARM chip inside of the Raspberry Pi 400. Now this also works with the Raspberry Pi 4 and it has for a while, but we finally got pretty good support for the Pi 400, so I figured I'd go ahead and show it off. Now before we get started, I do want to mention that this is not an install tutorial. I just wanted to show this off real quick. If you're interested in getting this up and running, it's actually pretty easy. And there is an awesome tutorial on YouTube by one of my good buddies, Lee PSP Video. Leave a link for his channel in the description. A few days ago, as of making this video, he did a full install tutorial, so definitely go ahead and check that out. And don't forget to subscribe to his channel because he does a lot of great Raspberry Pi stuff over there. Now this whole setup here is coming to us from the awesome people over at Windows on Raspberry Pi. They do have a Discord, and I'll leave a link for that down below. But this is not meant to be a daily driver whatsoever. There are a few things that aren't working on the Pi 400, like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and HDMI sound. You will have to have a USB sound card in order to get sound out of this setup, but we do have working Ethernet. And in this video, I just kind of wanted to go through the motions and just show you how it performs. Now, I know it's a bit hard to see how it's set up right now, so what I'm going to do is plug my Raspberry Pi into my game capture so we can get a better look at the screen. All right, so here it is, Windows 10 running on the Raspberry Pi 400. We have the quad-core Cortex-A72 BCM2711 CPU. I do have this overclocked to 2.3 gigahertz. We have access to all four gigabytes of memory on the Raspberry Pi 400. I'm actually running this from a micro SD card, but I would actually recommend running this from a USB drive. It's totally possible to do it with the latest firmware on your Raspberry Pi 400. I also have a one terabyte drive plugged in just so we could play some videos from it. So we do have USB storage working and built-in ethernet on the Pi 400 does work. Now there is an awesome application that you can install from the guys over at Windows on Raspberry Pi and that's Windows on Raspberry Pi control panel. From here, we get our performance metrics. We have a processor, memory, disk usage. Uh, graphics isn't working right now. We do have an overclocking section, so you can go in here and manually overclock. GPIO control, you can control your GPIO pins directly from this control panel here. About and applications. So they do have a little section in here that allows you to download ARM-based applications. As you can see, there's not a lot here, but what is here does come in really handy. And I've actually been using the ARM version of Edge here, and it does work really well on this Pi 400 overclocked to 2.3. So first thing I wanted to take a look at was VLC. This is the ARM version. It's available from Windows on Raspberry Pi control panel. You can get it directly from that applications menu. Like I mentioned, I do have that one terabyte drive plugged in. So I'm gonna play a video from that. We'll go to open file here. Should bring it up for me. Oh, and I'm already here. One terabyte. Since we don't have HDMI audio on this build, I do have a USB audio adapter with a 3.5 millimeter audio line in and out, and then that's plugged into a battery powered speaker. So I'm actually recording the audio from that speaker from a microphone. So this isn't looking bad at all. I'm pretty surprised that it's playing this. This is not a 4K video. It's 1080p, MP4, eight megabits per second. I know it said 4K, but I just converted it down. Now going into this, I thought we were going to get really bad performance out of 1080p video. I was actually prepared with a 720p video, but it looks like it's handling 1080p from this ARM version of VLC on Windows 10. So the next thing I wanted to go through and test was just a little bit of internet browsing and YouTube video playback. So we'll use the ARM version of Microsoft Edge. Again, got this from the Windows on Raspberry Pi control panel and we'll just head over to the Raspberry Pi website. And that was pretty quick. I thought we'd be working a lot slower here. Uh, one thing I wanted to check, let me just take this over to the left-hand side. I'm gonna open up my task manager. Really, what's, what's holding this back is uh, the storage because I'm running this from a micro SD card and we'll take a look at this. So we'll have disk usage right here at 9%. Let's go back and see if we max this out. Even just browsing, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. So let's head over to YouTube. Let 
Yeah, I figured that would jump right up to 100%, but it didn't. And there's the video I wanted to test right here. Pause it. Stats for nerds. Make sure we're at 1080p. Give it a second. Then I'll click play here. And we'll go full screen with it. So it did take a little while to go full screen. Not bad at all. If we take a look at our drop frames, we're at 8 out of 660. Jumped up to 9 there out of close to 800. But it doesn't look as smooth as it should be. And keep in mind, this is a 24 FPS video. Let's see if we can make it a little bit smoother, just dropping it down to 720. And we're not getting any drop frames at 720. Now when it comes to those drop frames at 1080p, I figured it would just be like on the rise the whole time, but it was doing a decent job. This is working way better than I thought it would. Another cool thing about this build for the Raspberry Pi is that it's actually able to start up x86 applications. Even though we're on an ARM CPU here, I have downloaded the Windows version of PPSSPP. I'm going to launch the 64-bit version. And I was really surprised by the performance here. Uh, I didn't even think it was going to launch this application. I got a game right here and a controller plugged into the Raspberry Pi 400. Get back into my save state. And as you can see, it actually starts up these PSP games. It's not the best performance. I don't have frame skip on or anything like that. But to see this x86 version of PPSSPP running on an ARM CPU is pretty cool. And if I go into the settings and turn frame skip on, we can actually run this pretty smoothly at 30 FPS. The FPS is up in the top right hand corner and we're sitting at 30 here. I mean, this game is playable like this. So it would be nice to be playing this at 60. But for what we're working with here, Windows on the Raspberry Pi, this is really awesome performance. And it's actually running in DirectX 11 mode. If I swap it over to OpenGL, it won't launch. And I've also tried DirectX 9, but it seemed to give me a little worse performance than setting PPSSPP to DirectX 11. So there was a few more things that I wanted to test, like GeForce Now, but unfortunately, as soon as I get into a game, it tells me that my system's not compatible. I also tested out Stadia through Chromium, and it just loads forever. I was trying to do Cyberpunk 2077. Unfortunately, those streaming apps aren't working right now. But seeing that we were able to download PPSSPP and get it up and running in Windows on the Raspberry Pi is really promising. What I'm going to do is work on this a little bit more. I'm going to try to get some older games up and running here. I did want to test out stuff like Simpsons Hit and Run and just see if we could even get it to start up in this. So I will have another video coming up soon. I'm going to get GOG up and running here. I'll download some of the free stuff, some of the games that I have already purchased, and just see what kind of older PC games we can run in Windows on the Raspberry Pi. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. Like I mentioned, if you're interested in getting this up and running on your Raspberry Pi 4 or your Pi 400, definitely check out Lee PSP's YouTube channel. Link for that is in the description. If there's any older games or any older applications that you want to see running on this, let me know what it is in the comments below and I'll try to add it into the next video. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.